In the future we're going to try the pizzicato polka, which I have worked on arrangement. It would be easier to teach it if people could read music, and so I've set this up as an exercise in how to read uh, the music along with tabs. Where to begin? 1853, I suppose. That's when Commodore Perry from the US uh, wanted to open trade with Japan, and in 1853 the black ships arrived, which opened up trade, and the Western world was exposed to Japanese art and culture. This uh, led to a great interest. Japan was the flavor of the month for about 30, 60, the rest of the century, um, which produced the Mikado from Gilbert and Sullivan, Puccini's Madame Butterfly. But earlier in 1877, there was a waltz written, accredited to Arthur de Lully, who didn't exist. Instead, it was written by a 16-year-old girl, Euphemia Allen, whose brother Mozart had a publishing company, not Wolfgang. Mozart Allen. Since Japan was so popular, she had written a waltz intending to give you an oriental feel, and the piano was to be played in a chopping style. So it's the celebrated chop waltz uh, of Euphemia Allen. I've done an arrangement, which you can see here. You will be able to learn this. We're just going to dissect it. This side is the single part arrangement. On this I've done a second line for baritone ukulele, which will give us the bass. This might look complicated at the moment. That may resemble the formula for rocket fuel. Don't worry. So if we just look at this part, take it bar by bar, it looks complicated now, but if you just focus on this part here, you'll see these strings. That string is the string furthest away from you, that's the string closest to you. So the top string is the highest pitch. There's a number one on string two on fret one. Number zero means string four open, so you don't press any frets. So really only one finger is involved on the fretboard there. And in that whole bar, there are one, two, three notes. You pluck those two strings together. Second bar is identical. Third bar, there is a change. You actually take your finger off. So this whole thing is simpler than all of this complex stuff. You are only looking at numbers on these little lines here. Take the most complex bar towards the end, or two bars, which I will show you on this, looks rather menacing. So if we take a look at just these third and second last bars, you'll see that the top string is on fret two, 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 nothing, two, and three. Not too strenuous, but if we look that way, these notes correspond to these numbers. String one, fret two. String two, fret three. String 3, fret 2. The next time we pluck notes, string 1, fret 2. String 3, fret 2. So it's just two strings plucked. Third note in that bar, string 1, fret 2. String 2, fret 3. The first one is fret 3 also. So that finger stays on fret 2, that finger stays on fret 3, that finger stays on fret 2, which you might recognize is a G chord. In the following bar, again it's 2 and 2, nothing in the middle. Then 0, 0, so you're taking your hand off because you're changing your chord to string 1 fret 2, string 2 fret 1, string 3 fret 2, which is a G7. You have played G to G7 very often. So it's pluck, 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 but they're all even. So it's pluck, 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 which will sound like this. And the last chord, string one, fret three, 
string 2, 3 and 4, no fret. End of the piece.